This is the seventh video on inverse Laplace. The previous video looked at analytic tools for doing inverse Laplace with MATLAB. So in other words, I've got a Laplace transform and I want MATLAB to do the partial fractions and then tell me explicitly what the uh, inverse Laplace is as a function of time. This video instead is going to look at numeric solutions where all I'm interested in is the numbers. Now, there are many times where it's actually a lot more efficient, that's the key word, to compute numeric solutions um, because you don't need partial fractions at all. And often, numeric solutions and graphs uh, to represent behavior are all that you really need as a designer. That's why this video is focusing on that subject. First of all, however, let's look at what we'll do if we've used the symbolic toolbox in MATLAB as discussed in the previous video, and we have got a symbolic expression um, using inverse Laplace. How do we go from that to determine the numeric values of interest? Well, the answer, and you'll see there was a hint in the previous video at the end, is you use this function subs.m. Now, subs is short for substitute, so hopefully it's pretty obvious what it means. So you substitute in the required values of the independent variable, which normally in the case we're talking about here, would be time. So here's an example. If, in a piece of paper, you had written y equals f of x or y equals f of t, and f is your function, in MATLAB code, if f is a symbolic expression, and x is your independent variable, and you want to substitute in particular numeric values for x, the command you use is this one here, y equals subs, f comma x. So that's equivalent to writing y equals f of x on a piece of paper. In other words, first tell me the function, and then after the comma, tell me the independent values that you're interested in. An example here then, just to demonstrate subs in action. You'll see what we've done. In line one, we've made s symbolic. In line two, we've defined a transform, y of s equals s plus one over s times s plus two. In line three, we've used I Laplace to find y of t. And then in line four, we've used this subs function. So it says y val equals subs y. And then the key thing to note is what we've put down here, where we've written 0, 1, 2. Those are the values of the independent variable that we're going to use. So that's like saying find y of 0, find y of 1, and find y of 2. And here's the result. You can see y, which was the function of time, is written as a half times e to the minus 2t plus a half. And then when I substitute in t equals naught, I get 1. And you'll see that's there. When I substitute in the t equals 1, I get that value. And the t equals 2, I get that value. Another example of subs. This one includes the generation of a plot. So again, the first three lines, uh, we've made s symbolic. We've defined our transform, a more complicated one here, 2 times s minus 3 over s times s plus 2 times s squared plus 4. Not something you'd want to do by hand. And then we found y of t using i Laplace, capital Y. The next line, um, tt equals lin space 0, 10, 100, defines the values of time that we're interested in. So it says, give me 100 values of time equally spaced between 0 and 10 seconds. Line 4, we're using this subs function again. So we're saying that values of y that I'm interested in, I substitute into y of t all these values of time which are tt. So what I should end up with from that is y val will have the same number of values as the number of times in the vector tt. And there, unsurprisingly, therefore you can see that I can make this plot statement, plot tt comma y val. So times against corresponding values of y of t. Just for information, that's what y of t looks like. You can see, yep, it's quite a complicated expression, but we don't need to worry about that detail here. And here is the plot. Very nice. Now, in general, when people are doing control and using Laplace, they probably won't be using the symbolic toolbox. They're more likely to be using the control toolbox. And if you're using the control toolbox, then transforms are defined using this tf.m function. 
Now a bit of a warning here. MATLAB is somewhat clumsy. TF can be used to represent either signals or transfer functions and it's up to the user to keep track of which is which. So when you see a particular transform is that representing a signal or is that representing a transfer function? There are then two main numeric tools, I emphasize the word numeric tools, for doing inverse Laplace. The first one is impulse.m and this does a direct inverse Laplace and gives you the numeric values at specified times. So that's what you might want to use if your Laplace transform represented a signal. If you used impulse, you would get the inverse Laplace and therefore you get the values of that signal. However, um, there is another function, step.m, and what that does is it says first I'm going to multiply this transform by 1 over s and then I'll do the inverse Laplace. Now that's quite useful because often your transform represents a transfer function and what you're interested in is how does this transfer function respond when the input is a step. And so step.m says what I'm going to do is multiply by 1 of s and then do the inverse Laplace because this is an operation you will need quite often. So example 1. You can see in this box in line 1 I've defined y as tf 1 comma 1 4. Now the way the tf operates is the one, the thing before the comma is the numerator and the thing after the comma is the denominator. So what this says is the numerator is 1 and the coefficients of the denominator are 1 and 4. So you get 1 over s plus 4 as I've written here. The next line, line 2, says, OK, I want you to do the inverse Laplace, and the command for that is impulse. Now, you'll notice there's a few other numbers in here, so let's have a look and see what those numbers are. I've got a 1.5 after the y. That sets the end time. It says, I want to find the numeric values of the inverse Laplace of y of s up to an end time of 1.5 seconds. So you can set the end time however you like. And then it's going to generate two outputs. You'll see here they are, y and t. And that says, find me the values of y of t and the corresponding times. Now, what MATLAB will do is it will choose an arbitrary number of times, depending on some internal thinking that it's got. So who knows how long y and t will be? That's not a main um, point for this lecture. The third line you see there, we give the plot. So first, you can see the transfer function. There's y. You can see it comes out as 1 over s plus 4, as expected. And then second, here's the plot of the inverse Laplace. As you expected, 1 over s plus 4 represents e to the minus 4t. So you've got quite fast convergence down to 0. Second example, then. In this one, in line 1, you'll see I've used capital G um, with tf. And that's because I'm trying to say this is representing a transfer function and g is quite a common variable to use for a transfer function and I'm interested in the step response of this transfer function so you'll see in line 2 I've used step rather than impulse now the arguments in this line are the same as for impulse so you'll see the 3 that's the desired end time and the y and t the uh, outputs and the corresponding times again with a plot so there's the transfer function that you can see, s plus 1 over s squared plus 5s plus 6. And you'll notice this corresponds, the s plus 1 corresponds to those two coefficients there. And the s squared plus 5s plus 6 corresponds to those coefficients there. I should remind you, by the way, if you're ever confused by this, just go into MATLAB and type help tf or help step, and it will remind you how to use them. And here's the corresponding plot just what you would have expected. Steady state gain of 1 over 6, which matches the transfer function we've just entered. A question then. A closed loop system with unity negative feedback as a unit step loop input. Plot the corresponding output. The open loop system has gotten this model. What will we do first then? Well, the first is we want to find the equivalent closed loop transfer function model. Well, if I look at this ODE, here it is, 0.2 dw dt plus 4w equals 5u, and I want to represent that as a transfer function, then what you will get is w of s equals g of s into u of s, and I hope it's obvious to you, 
if not you'll need to look at the previous videos, that g is 5 over 0.2s plus 4. Now I could write down the closed loop transfer function by inspection because we know how to do that from other videos as well gc equals g over 1 plus g but I'm going to get MATLAB to do that piece of code for me because in general g might be far more complicated and therefore calculating the closed loop transfer function is a non-trivial task in itself. Here's the code then. You'll see the first line I enter the transfer function so g equals tf 5 comma 0.24 and then I've introduced this next command, you'll see it here, feedback. And what feedback does is it calculates the closed loop transfer function for me. Now I suggest you use help feedback on MATLAB to get more information about how this code works. But in quick summary, the bit before the comma is the forward path and the bit after the comma is everything else in the loop. So you'll see here um, the forward path was G and everything else in the loop was 1. So I've got g, comma 1. So gc represents my closed loop transfer function. And I think you'll see, here's the answer that MATLAB's given, 5 over 0.2s plus 9. I haven't had to do that calculation myself. You can check it later if you don't believe me. The next two lines are the same as in the previous slides. So line 3, we calculate the step response, and I've used an end time of 0.2 seconds, and then we plot. And here's the answer. A summary then. We've demonstrated that computing numeric values of an inverse Laplace is straightforward in MATLAB using the control toolbox. Students can enter the transform using tf.m and then use impulse or step as appropriate. These functions give numeric outputs and the corresponding times. And once you've collected the outputs and the times, you can use those in a plot statement to plot how you want. Students are advised to use MATLAB to, to help themselves determine how to use the more advanced functionality that goes with each of these functions, so impulse step, TF, and so on. It's not really the purpose of this video to go through every nuance within MATLAB, just to demonstrate the key principles. And a final bullet point, which uh, isn't listed here because I think it's rather secondary, but if you do want to use the symbolic toolbox and then you want to do inverse Laplace, then you need to use this function I've just highlighted, subs.m.